Hi, welcome back to Tonksu TV. I'm Master Dan Segarra, and this week's episode is jam-packed full of technical goodness. This week's episode, we have another great form application by Master Matt Becker, another great grappling application by Master Josh Trowbridge, uh, another fun story by Joe and Don Bazufi and myself, and a great drill by yours truly. So, with that said, let's get started. Take it away, Master Trowbridge. Thank you, Master Sugira. Uh, my name is Josh Trowbridge with the World Mod Tungsteno Federation, located right here in Madison, Wisconsin. Uh, today we're going to leave off where we left off last time. Uh, now we're going to go more into the side mount drills and the side mount baits. Uh, the side mount is one that's not much well known outside of the Jiu Jitsu realm, uh, but we're going to focus on that as an option, especially as an invasion option. All right, so to start off, we're going to start kind of where we left off last time, uh, out of the guard. So when we're starting here, we had options moving around. We're trying to evade. Uh, one of the options we're going to use is a leg pass. So instead of going over, we're going to go to the side. This is going to be more coming from a striking realm than anything. So when he's using his feet and really trying either to stop me or strike me. So if he's using his feet and I'm trying to not get hit, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go past. I don't want to muscle anything. So what we're going to do is I'm going to do a quick little parry, essentially. So if I know he's trying to hit me with this leg and I'm defending this, the little parry, I don't want to tug, but just that little parry here. So if I'm moving, boom, that's all it takes. So as I'm going back, Again, whether you know we're moving around, maybe stopping me, you know my arms are tied up, he has what we call a spider guard, just that little tug, boom, to go in. As I'm on side mount, one thing that we want to remember is to not over sit on him essentially. So I don't want to sit my way too far ahead. The farther I bring my body weight over him, the easier for him to roll and take me off balance. Instead, I want to bring my hips back. So I'm going to try to have my hips on the floor and my body weight hang. My ideal position is one over, one under. This is going to give me where if I want to hold, if he's still trying to strike, it's going to help me defend against the hands too, keep everything tucked. So it's just a nice stationary spot. Maybe you need to catch your breath. Maybe you got hit. Um, Maybe he's just a lot bigger, I need to burn him out a little bit. So this is just a good position. Don't try to muscle. You can see I'm using my far foot over here as a base. So if he tries to roll me this way, if he tries to turn in, here's my, my stop. This hand can be here. So one and two. This, if I have under control, even if I'm here, I can use my elbow or I can turn my hand out. So it's a, a very quick, effective move. Uh, we're going to work going to new position. If you're not fluid in, in jiu-jitsu, this is definitely not going to be a spot you want to hang out all day. Eventually, they're going to find space. So right now what we're going to do is we're going to figure out how to progress onto the mount. So there's two different ways. We're going to show a little more basic foundational way first, and then we'll show you the quick way second. The, the foundational way would be, think of dropping the knee in, I want to bring the other foot in, have two knees down. A lot of times this can be more instinctual or I get pulled down with them maybe from a stand-up technique and I just land. So from here I still want control. I want to sit back, my butt back over my feet so I still have a counterweight. All I'm going to do is bring my south side, meaning his foot side, into the hip or the belt line here. So as I'm up, I still want to stay sitting down. This helps me get the entry. So if he's trying to use his legs to stop me to move, I made entry already. Once I'm in through the hip, now I'm going to keep walking. And here's my mount right here. So as we're through, so you can see how I'm going to move through. We're going to, his legs block, we're going to try to move out of the way for you here. So we'll start all the way from the beginning. So if I need a pass, I'm working, boom, 
establishing side mount. In. Walk. From here, both feet in, hook in. So that's going to be our, our basic way. There's a lot quicker way now. Think of it kind of like a crescent kick. So this is going to take a, a little more finesse. So we want to relax while we do this. As this splits up to this plank, I'm going to post. So I'm going to put all my weight into this back foot here. So that way I can hang. This front foot is going to slide under. Through. This one here. Pull up. So again, as we're here, spine under, hooks, so I'm slapping the floor, and then right away I'm going to hook in with my heel. And that's going to be my counter like this, so it's going to pull my hips up. They go on top. So those are going to be two of the more basic approaches to it. Uh, we're going to have another variation when we're on the bottom, which is going to be the shrimp. So I'm going to show just the the basic shrimp move itself right now. So if I'm here, if I have my opponent in front of me this way, I want to get back, but I want to stay facing him. We never turn away. We always want to keep eyes forward, keep body forward. That's going to give us protection. We can use our body however we want. So what we're going to do is, a shrimp is going to take your butt, and essentially you're going to make a, a triangle shape or V shape. So as I'm here, I can pulse into my toes, use my elbow, my shoulder, and sit back. So this here gives me a room. So what we want to have as our goal, back and forward. So that's going to allow us to get our feet towards our opponent. So if he's here, maybe he's going to try to make side bound entry. Okay? Sure, shoot. So if he's here and he's trying to make entry, here's my shrimp, here's my entry, okay? So again, I can use shoulder, hip, get the hands up wherever you can. So as he's here, room, now I have room, I can use him however I want. So basic control. From here we can bite the back. Right now don't worry about underneath, but you can see I have a lot of hand techniques available I can even start using my legs down here. One of my favorite strikes out there is kidney strike. Go back to always Gracie days. Um, but we can also use this as a post. Because now maybe I want distance. Here's another option to move back. So we have a, a lot of variation there. It seems easy, but it takes practice. Biggest thing to remember during that is to relax to make it smooth, to not try not to rush it. So again, those are just a few little bits and pieces from side mount. Um, that's again an area, if you don't get to practice a lot, you don't want to stay there too long. So we want to try to, to get out of the way. So again, on the bottom, distance. Distance is key. From the top, you just try to wear them out, keep control, and try to get top position. Uh, again, my name is uh, Master Josh Trowbridge from Madison, Wisconsin uh, with World Mounted Tongue Sido Federation. Uh, back to you, Master Skira. Great drill, Master Trowbridge. Thanks for sharing that with us. Now we're going to go over the form application with Master Matt Becker. Take it away, Master Becker. Thank you, Master Segura. This is Matt Becker at La Jolla Karate, and these are the applications of the Pyongyang forms. Let's look at the very end of Pyongyang Chodon today and talk about the applications for the low knife hand blocks. It starts here. Let's talk about what that means. So today we'll cover three applications. The first one, as Mr. Schultz front kicks at me, this way. Let's talk about it. As his front kick is inbound, slow, I want to shift my weight to my rear leg, check his foot out of the way, and then deliver a groin kick. At this point, I have my hands. I can hit him again if necessary, or the groin kick might just end, uh, finish the fight. Again, I want to shift all my weight to my rear leg, 
as I check his foot, I want to maybe cup his ankle. That gives me an extra second to deliver a front kick to the groin. Let's look at it from a different angle. If Mr. Schultz kicks at me and I get to the back side of the kick, it pretty much works the same way here. So front side or back side, the application is very similar. Shift the weight, check, cup, and front kick to the groin. The question sometimes comes up, what's the guard hand for? What's this hand all about? And the answer is, it's in case they punch. So if Mr. Schultz throws a kick, I defend the kick, and then he punches, I can also defend a punch, and then deliver a kick. Let's look at that. As the kick is inbound, I shift my weight, I check the kick, but then I don't have enough time to kick him. I see the punch is inbound. I shift again with a middle knife hand block, and then the kick comes. At this point in class, we usually do some reflex development where we take turns doing the technique on each other in a slightly more live format. Not quite sparring, uh, more like development of the reflexes. You can find more Pyongyang applications on Instagram at La Jolla Karate. Back to you, Master Segura. Tong Su! Great form application, Master Becker. Thanks for sharing that with us. And now, a segment we're going to now call from this point on Tao Stories by Kyosinem Don Bazufi and myself. Enjoy. A long time ago, in a land far away, lived a young warrior monk. He trained in the martial art temple every day since as long as he could remember. One night, he began having a recurring nightmare. He dreamt of two dragons fighting inside him, one good and one evil. And whichever dragon won the battle, he would become either the good dragon or the bad one. This dream happened every night, night after night. This troubled him so much, he went to ask his teacher for help. Teacher, he said, I'm having this nightmare every night about a good dragon and bad dragon fighting inside me, and I'm worried I don't know which one will win or which one I will become. The teacher thoughtfully looked at him and said, the one you feed, my son. The one you feed. I hope you enjoyed that Tao story. And now, a segment by yours truly on microexpressions. Microexpressions is a very high level part of our art. And uh, as you will see in this segment, there's a lot of uh, advanced things that can come out of this. So, enjoy. Hi, Master Dan Segar for Tonsu TV. Welcome to this week's segment. Uh, this week we're going to talk about micro-expressions. Now micro-expressions, typically defined by body language experts, are uh, subconscious facial movements that give away mental intent. So it could be uh, a squinting of the eyes, uh, a slight dip of the chin, a, a slight frown or furrowing of the eyebrow uh, uh, that gives away uh, a micro expression which gives away information as to what the person's thinking before they actually say it. Uh, now this is very interesting but it's also very, uh, you have to really uh, study it and practice it and to get any uh, value out of it. But the concept uh, when I first learned about it I liked a lot and it reminded me of something else. When I was a young boy there was a, a man named the uh, incredible amazing Kreskin and I used to watch Kreskin on shows like the Mike Douglas show and Kreskin was uh, a magician, but he would take uh, science and scientific principles and abnormalities of balance in the body and uh, psychology and combine this into a, into a show which made you think he had extraordinary powers. And one of the things he did which completely just blew my mind for many years is he did a thing called contact mind reading. And it is actually what it was. He would uh, have his, uh, the check, he would make a check for $10,000, and he would say to a person, you hide this check anywhere in this building, and if I can't find that check, you get the money. Now, he did this because now this person has a very uh, important stake in order to do this, and now they don't want him to find this check internally. And what he would do is he would hold their hand, and he would walk around, just silently walk around, and just through feeling subconsciously he would feel well, if they're pulling maybe it's over that way so he heads over that way and then if they relax too much he knows they're trying to trick him now and he's homing in on it and it's basically a hot cold game but done on such a subtle level 
that uh, it's amazing. And then he would get to the point where he could actually do it holding a, a handkerchief between him and the person. And uh, it basically is mind reading for all extents and purposes, but through touch. And uh, so it's like a, a very sophisticated game of hot cold. So uh, this now made me think of uh, another thing. And now uh, years ago, my, my first instructor, Master Daniel Bannard, had us do a crazy exercise. And I had a red belt here and a red belt here. And they both had Shinai, which is the, the split bamboo kendo sword. And uh, I was blindfolded. And he would have them attack me. And they would attack me here and here and here. And after getting cracked a few times from both directions by them, I started not let, liking getting hit. So I felt, I noticed that when they were going to hit me, once they started from the touching position, I felt the stick go off and scrape and then come back same direction. Then I felt it go up and then come down and then off and then down. And usually if it came straight off, it was a straight strike. And instantly I figured out uh, what they were doing. So with my eyes closed, I started blocking them. And Master Banner was like, can you see from the blindfold? I'm like, no, sir. And uh, I explained how I, uh, how I figured it out, and he wound up promoting me on the spot. So uh, that led into uh, this exercise, what I'm going to show you now. So uh, it's very important that when you train with your partner, you give them proper energy. So if you just turn around and, and give your partner a wet noodle, they're not going to learn to read the micro expressions. And you're not going to help them develop that skill. So when you work, if you're going to give them a, a strike, for example, you have to give this, you know, change from uh, centered to about to strike to strike. And this way they get to see this little change in the face, changing the attention, and then the actual strike comes. So they'll notice then, hopefully, with proper training, that little mm, uh, or that little change in the eyes that will signal to them that they're in danger and be able to uh, be ahead of the game then. Uh, poker players wear sunglasses, the, the good ones, and, and why? Because when you see something that you really like, your pupils expand. When you see something you don't like, your pupils contract. Watch people on TV interviews. Uh, sometimes it's hard to see because of the strong lighting, but watch people when you're interacting with them too, and you'll see pupil dilation and pupil expansion. Uh, even thinking of something you really like will cause your pupils to expand. And thinking of something you don't like will cause them to dilate if you're thinking of something bright and something dark. You can try it uh, with friends and see. So that being said, that's why poker players often will wear sunglasses. So the other poker players can't see. They get a, they get a good card and boom, you know, their eyes go like this. And the other guys go, I'm out, I'm out, I'm out. They get a bad card, bing, their eyes, you know, pupils contract. And then everybody that's good, I'm out, I'm out, I'm out, I'm out. So uh, looking at the eyes, the micro expressions, all of these things can give us an advantage uh, in an attack. So uh, with Mr. Peters, so one of the skills that I developed over the years is the ability to uh, feel someone striking me through uh, just touch. So it's kind of like what Creston did, but you know, in a combative way. Now basically, uh, the idea is your partner, now, if he puts his finger here, your partner can't just go like this. Again, that's wet noodle stuff. That's not intent. I have to turn around and think like I'm going to really touch his body there, like that, when I do it. So when I have my hand here and he goes to touch, I'll feel this motion, right? It's very little information, right? But I'll do it. So my eyes are closed. He goes to touch. I can feel, right? I can feel that motion. We, have set, we set nothing up with this, okay? Now, when I demo it, I'll be like this, and then I'll feel something, and then I'll, you know, I'll uh, do some kind of counterattack, blindfolded, and I'll do board-breaking blindfolded, so it's a whole little demo that I do. But I've gotten to the point also that I can do this with a stick, okay? I can actually hold a stick and feel through the stick the intention and block. But how you develop this simply is your partner puts their hands on your shoulders, and you go to touch their shoulders, so his eyes are closed, and when he feels that movement, he blocks. Now, if he feels forward pressure, it's two hands. If he feels downward pressure, he knows that. So he feels a turning and a dropping, and he knows that. If he feels a, a double drop, he knows it's that. It's that simple. Then you go to the hand. And then, uh, why the hand? Because you're going to feel more information here when you do this. Okay? Then you go to a finger. 
Okay, then you can go to a, a weapon. Uh, I've actually practiced it with two people. That's hard, but you do it with two people. One here, one here, and you can feel it. Okay, so thank you, Mr. Peters. Sir. So um, that's learning about uh, feeling. The micro expression part is when you, your eyes are open and you practice with your partner and you come in strong, right? You go from a centered, peaceful position, face blank like a poker player, then they've got to see that when, 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 you're, when you're going to attack. And that will really develop a very valuable skill to help uh, make your life safer. So uh, get used to practicing and learning to sense these uh, micro uh, expressions in, throughout the body and uh, you'll be safer and a better practitioner too and you'll be able to sense things before they actually happen which uh, you know is kind of uh, master level stuff so this is high level stuff uh, you know this is the first time I'm sharing it publicly so I hope you enjoy it don't abuse it uh, it's not a, it's not a uh, gimmicky trick and things like that that uh, you do, it's something, it's a training tool. So I'm sharing it with you, don't abuse it and, and then just start making videos and doing stuff like that uh, because uh, then uh, it, it, it takes away from the actual lesson of it which is for you to sense and feel uh, attacks and danger coming your way before you're actually uh, threatened. So, hope you liked it. Comment below, spread the word on Tangsu TV please and I will see you next segment. Thanks for watching, Tangsu. Thanks for joining us for another episode of Tongsu TV. Please don't forget Master Grandmaster Robert Kovaleski, Master Kovaleski, and uh, Master Cynthia Rothrock are doing their uh, regular national and international martial art tournament this weekend. So if you're going, I hope to see you there. If not, make sure you put it on your calendar for next year because it, it is a fantastic event not to be missed. And uh, I'm there every year, and we do seminars and clinics, and uh, this year we're honored by... Uh, Chung Jang Nim, uh, Huang Jiang Li, and a whole contingency from Korea that uh, is going to share some Taekyun. So it's not to be missed. So if you can make it still, get there. If not, make sure you put it on your calendar for next year. For now, this is Master Dan Segarra for Tang Su TV. Thanks for watching. Tang Su.